Good afternoon, Colorado. Welcome to our Friday edition of What's for Lunch. Who are we even for already? Hi, guys. I don't know. Part of the show, right? <laughs> I'm your host, Larry Hurst. <laughs> Today in studio, I have my good friend, Chef Lon from Bistro La Rue. Welcome, buddy. Hey, guys. How's it going today? Good to see you, Larry. Good, good to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> For people who don't know who the heck you are or haven't seen you when you were here with Yumcha a few months ago, okay. give them a little history of you and then LaRue. Sure. Uh, my name is Lon Simmonsma. I'm the executive chef and founder of Cholon Restaurant Concepts, just right here in Denver, Colorado. I moved to Denver 12 years ago from New York City, where I was a chef uh, at Spice Market as well as Budokan. So in 2000... Those are big deals. That's why he name dropped those. Yeah, no, those were cool restaurants, <laughs> and, you know, Asian inspired. And, and when I moved to Denver in 2010, you know, the economy was not doing so well in New York. So I decided to take a leap of faith and move my career here to Denver, and it made sense to open an Asian restaurant first. So Cholon, you know, is what people well, know me explain as. Explain why Asian, because you skipped well, that Budokan, part. Budokan and Spice Market were two of the biggest, you know, Chinese Budokan and Spice Market, Southeast Asian, um, you know, Asian. And then you also travel. Traveled a lot through Asia. Yeah, yeah I've lived in Asia for a couple of years of my life. Yeah. Um, opened a restaurant in Shanghai. I've done dim sum in Hong Kong, which is where I learned to make all those fun little soup dumplings. Uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, taught culinary school in Singapore a few times. So yeah, love Asia, love the people. But prior to being into Asian food, when I was a young chef, you know, I was kind of groomed in more of the uh, the French sort of militant classic French way. So Larue, in in as my second restaurant, um, was more of a celebration of my you know early career as a chef, getting saute pans thrown at me in uh, in two Michelin star restaurants in the south of France. I was able to work at Arzac, which was ranked the third best restaurant in the world when I was there. And um, yeah, I was very European rooted before I ever got into anything Asian. So this is kind of a celebration of, you know, a young chef just kind of finding his way and his career in, in a foreign country and bringing that to Denver and celebrating it. Now, LaRue. you kind of skipped ahead a little bit. To me, it was fascinating when you told me where you grew up and how you grew up. Sure. Um, humbled background. Grew up in Iowa. My dad was a veterinarian. My mom had a huge garden. So I got into food very organically at a young age, learning to can and pickle and, you know, not necessarily trying to put Michelin star food on a plate, but to survive throughout the year. We would run downstairs and grab a, you know, some green beans and some, you know, my dad was a veterinarian. So oftentimes he would, you know, swap a cow for some of his services. So just grab a chunk of meat and grab some jars off the off the cellar walls and go up and just have dinner. So, you know, a really humble way of starting into food. And, you know, then, you know, later in my career, I got into culinary competitions, was- You were in the Olympics. Fortunate when I was 19 years old to be selected for the culinary Olympic team. And that just really took, you know, my vision of food to a whole different level from, you know, a good foundational standpoint of mm -hmm. just growing up around freshly grown ingredients. But why is it named LaRue? Xavier LaRue was my mentor chef. Um, at the CIA in upstate New York, Culinary Institute of Hyde America, Park. in Hyde Park. Uh, they have four restaurants on campus, and it's, it's a real treat to be what's called a fellow or essentially like a student sous chef um, of, of any of the four restaurants. But the Scaffier Room especially was the most you know, highly respected one when I was going to school there. And um, Xavier LaRue was an older French gentleman who was my mentor chef and who scooted me along and set me up in uh, some cool restaurants to work at in France. So you know, he really helped open my eyes to you know, outside the Midwest to, you know, being in culinary school in New York and then just, you know, taking the next step of living in foreign countries and getting screamed at in French all day. And, you know, that's really what I based a lot of my inspiration at LaRue for today. So, so when did LaRue open? Oh, boy, about a year before the pandemic. Okay. So we're just kind of getting our feet underneath us. And then, you know, March 17th hit and we had to close the restaurant and just navigating through COVID. We're on the other side now. Um, we've really kind of softened the menu and made it a, a lot more approachable fun wine list. We started with our wine list only being European wines, but then again, with difficulties importing and getting things from foreign countries, we started to kind of loosen the, the wine program a little bit and add some new world wines on there as well. So For people who haven't been to what's the concept? Concept is a Mediterranean bistro. So again, you know, I lived and worked in the south of France, worked in Spain, and I've spent a ton of time in Italy. So really that kind of trifecta of, of countries that border the Mediterranean and where I've, you know, spent a year and a half of my life living, working, and traveling. And um, you know, just really focusing on, I, I guess, Spanish tapas and a lot of a lot of French because that's where I spent the most time. And then, obviously, you can't forget some fresh pastas and antipastis and things from Italy. So, all right, let's talk about what you brought me for lunch today. Yep. First, we're drinking some lunch. Yeah, that's a grapes of wrath. So we freeze the grapes to make them the ice cubes. It has cognac, Campari, whiskey. 
uh, Lille Rouge and some Hibiscus Amaro. So a really intense masculine drink. And again, the grapes are frozen and used as the ice cube. So I've not seen that before. It doesn't dilute the drink. It just helps kind of, I guess, give the grapes some flavor. So when you bite into them, you get a little, a little zip as well as it's cooling the drink at the same time. Don't mind if I do. Please do. It's Friday. I'm going to finish it after you do. Are these frozen too? Nope, those aren't frozen on okay. top, just the ones that are inside. Okay, it's delicious. Thanks. And it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> All right, we'll go with this one. Good, yeah, so appetizer again, you know, very seasonal menu. Beets are, are being celebrated in season right now. So some beautiful burrata, pickled beets on the bottom, some uh, yellow golden beets as well as some red beets. And then I just grate some um, fresh horseradish on top, toasted hazelnuts and a little thyme. And then I, obviously we'll serve some nice warm toasted bread on the side of that at the restaurant. Stunning. And where do you get the mozzarella from? Uh, La Mutz. The best. Yeah, best guy in town. Another, again, you know, heirloom carrots are coming in season right now. So again, like we're hyper-focused on seasonality. All of these menu changes are, you know, kind of just happening the last week or two since summer, summer ended pretty quickly on us. So heirloom carrots, we braised some lentils in there as well. We made our own creme fraiche out of carrots on the side. And then some herbs and some celery and some uh, shaved radish for some textures and some different colors in there as well. Gorgeous dish. Thanks. This is my favorite. So, uh, I don't know if you know, if anyone's been to Cholon, but we have those little French onion soup dumplings, which I promise I'm going to make a dish better than those one day because it sucks being the guy who's known for the French onion soup dumplings. Um, At least you're known for something. Well, I guess, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. So, LaRue, again, I love French onion soup. It was one of my favorite things growing up as a kid. So, I wanted to kind of play with the idea of a braised short rib with all the ingredients, you know, celebrating French onion soup. So, I actually take the, the rinds of the cheese and I add them into the braising liquid for the show rib. So it gives a lot of that salty umami flavor. I add some Gruyere cheese into the, into the potatoes as well to give some cheesiness. And then, you know, just like French onion soup, you have the onions on top. So I caramelize a bunch of onions until they're almost like a, like a, a caramelized paste and pack that on top of the show rib to represent the onions. And then the toasted panko breadcrumbs obviously represent the, the croutons in the French onion soup. I toast them in a little bit of butter, finish those with some thyme. Again, another major ingredient in French onion soup. So, you know, it's a really fun, warm, sort of composed entree. But again, it's celebrating all the flavors and every ingredient that go into a French onion soup. You change the menu a lot. I don't think you, this is a dish that comes off, though. That's one of the ones that, you know, in, in my mind, there's two types of dishes in the restaurant. You have kind of your, your craveable dishes, the ones that people keep coming back for, you know, those four or five sort of signature dishes that you're known for. And then once you, you know, develop your, your clientele, then you got to keep, 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 keep them fresh so they come back for more. So, again, fun seasonal dishes, kind of a, you know, a staple on the menu that people crave and come back for. And then, again, the cocktail program is always evolving based on seasonality and... Give them an idea of a couple of the other things on the menu. A couple of other things on the menu. Well, a really fun play on shrimp cocktail. I did some research and found that uh, originally shrimp cocktail just wasn't ketchup with horseradish like we think of it here in America. It no, <laughs> no, and in France it's actually flambéed brandy and then some, a little bit of cream in there as well. So just kind of a fun different take on, on shrimp cocktail that a lot of people aren't familiar with. Um, man, steak frites. Steak frites on the menu. Yeah, we're using some Wagyu flat iron right now for our steak frites that came out really great. We have really fun, you gotta have, to have uh, deviled eggs on the menu. So fun truffle deviled eggs. We fry some capers on okay. top, sprinkle them so you get that nice salty texture and the salinity from the capers. And, and so that's on the dinner menu. When are you serving dinner? We serve dinner, uh, what, right now we're open Wednesday through Sundays. And very soon in the next couple weeks, we're gonna be tacking on Mondays and Tuesdays to get back to our pre, you know, pre-pandemic hours of operation of being seven days a week okay. again. Uh, we also do a really fun brunch on Saturdays and Sundays that starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, we're making our own crepes. We're doing a, a brioche French toast. We're making our own brioche, soaking it overnight in that custard. So it really takes on that like deep, you know, egg flavor. And, and it's almost like, like bread pudding, but you know, French toast style. You also have an amazing cinnamon roll. Oh, and most, most people screw it up because there's not enough frosting. Yeah, we worked on you that. You do enough frosting. We worked on that recipe for a really long time. We serve it in the little cast iron crocks. And yeah, it's like almost equal parts cinnamon roll to Yeah, nobody's to ever going to be like, uh, there's too much frosting on here. <laughs> I'm never going to get that complaint. Scrape it off if you don't want it, I guess. So you're, uh, you're doing anything special for Halloween? We are doing a, a DJ brunch, actually, for Halloween. Yeah, we're bringing in this really cool DJ that we met this summer. And uh, we're going to highlight him and his music and set up a fun little DJ booth in the corner and just do a really fun. You know, if you want to wear costumes, that's cool. But it's kind of a festive thing that we do on Sunday to you know, celebrate Halloween. Um, 5280 just voted LaRue one of the best happy hours in town. Okay. You know, we've Talk literally, about... well, we've taken a lot of our dishes and just, you know, we'll do smaller portions. So it's yeah. almost like, you know, again, sort of tapas style. Well, then... Instead of 
12, 13 bucks. The happy hour menu is like five, six, seven bucks. So. And then you also have the, do you have a wine and a champagne deal? Yeah, we do a, a bottle and a board. So we do the cheese and the charcuterie plate with a nice bottle of wine. I think it's like $25. And then we're doing a half dozen oysters and a bottle of, of Spanish cava. I think that's $22. It so is, it's yeah. a steal. I mean, we're just trying to get people excited and come celebrate with us uh, you know, after work and, and be and that place to come and enjoy after work. Somebody gave you like the sexiest restaurant or something. I think I think I gave myself. <laughs> that's that's fair. Yeah. Why so, wouldn't you? The Larue is by far the sexiest <laughs> restaurant. It is a very sexy <laughs> restaurant. No, I think I think I think we have gotten some some date night and some sort of that you know romantic sort of spot. So you know we we went big. We, we have a grandiose space, beautiful chandeliers. You know we have that old sort of you know French. Um, uh, you know recess sort sort of mirrors where it looks like it's like old and and, and antique looking and. Yeah, I just wanted to make it feel like as you walk into LaRue, like it's like, wow, am I really in downtown Denver or how did I how did I get here? No, just, it's an absolute escape to, to Paris, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I wanted it to, to feel like. You know, we, we stuck with that sort of French blue, that dark blue. So yeah, it feels romantic. We have a fun little cart that we uh, do cheese service as well as some flambe desserts off of. So that kind of old school geared on where you're driving the cart around the dining room and yeah. Chef LaRue went to Paris and bought me one of those old school duck presses. Back in the day, where you put the carcasses in there and then t uh, basically squish the duck bones, and the blood would come out, and then that would thicken the sauce from the the proteins in the blood. It, it's an old school thing from oh, like a hundred years ago, but we don't actually use it. It's okay. just on display in the bar. And it's um, called the Duck Press. What's your website? Uh, LaRueDenver.com. Yeah, I think is that it right? is. Yeah. Okay. Help, help me out. Here. I'm not going to ask you for your phone for the phone number. <laughs> don't ask Nobody. Me for, don't ask me for my Instagram handle either. <laughs> So nice well, give him a follow, uh, both <laughs> personally at... Yeah, uh, Lon Simmons Ma. Yep. Or at, at Bistro LaRue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it says LaRue Denver. I'm LaRue guessing. Denver, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. LaRue Denver, Cholon Denver, Yamcha Denver, and a couple more really fun and exciting projects in the works. Thanks for coming back on. I think we might see you again in December. I'm working on getting him for another episode and have him bring Cholon and French onion soup dumplings. Larry, any time I can spend time with you is a good day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back at this again next week. we got a full lineup of shows. Let's eat! How is it best mozzarella? I don't understand why anybody would use anybody else's.